How can we make crops resilient to environmental change? How do we combat diseases like malaria? How is climate change affecting pollinators and their food plants? And how do we sustainably extract minerals for new green technologies? The collections here at the Natural History Museum can help answer these pressing questions. We have 80 million specimens spanning over 4 billion years of history. Museum scientists are using these specimens collected over 400 years to develop extraordinary insights into the natural world. Over the next five years, we're digitizing 20 million specimens, a quarter of our collection. Combining these data with new visualization tools will allow analyses on a scale never seen before to address some of the world's greatest challenges, the long-term impact of climate change, for example. This is a drawer of orange-tipped butterflies. Behind me, there's a team of digitizers who are making images of every single specimen and also the data labels associated with those specimens. This digital database will make the information in the collections easily accessible in a way that it's never been before. These are the food plants of the orange tip. This is the lady's smock and this is hedge garlic. The caterpillars of the orange tip feed on the seed pods of the lady's smock. But for those seed pods to be in perfect condition for the caterpillars, the flowering date of this food plant is critical. What our work's starting to show is that there's a good chance the emergence date of the caterpillar and the flowering date of its food plant will become out of synchrony. This provides an example of how we can use our historic collections to look at how long-term environmental change impacts on the interactions between organisms. Digitising our collection is also vital for managing the sustainable extraction of minerals from the Earth's last great frontier, the deep sea. The fundamental problem with trying to understand the impacts of mining the deep sea is our simple lack of knowledge of what species live there and what would be their ecological functional resilience to change to disturbance caused by mining. We're talking about places such as uh, abyssal plains, areas of between four and 5,000 metres water depth, and also areas such as hydrothermal vents, where superheated water is emanating from the Earth's crust and releasing minerals such as gold and silver and copper and cobalt. The majority of our work is done using remotely operated vehicles. And that allow us to actually have um, high quality uh, video information, looking at the animals that live there, and then also uh, collecting specimens. So here at the museum, we then DNA sequence them, and then we put all of this together in a series of databases, which allow us to, to map the distribution of organisms, uh, to look at how connected they are across different spatial scales. Digitization helps governments and companies quickly make informed decisions about how to minimize their impact on the natural world. Our collection is also being used to see how we can mitigate the impact of environmental change. We human beings depend upon fewer than a dozen plant species for 80% of the calories we consume. That's very few, and over the centuries of our domestication of these food crops, we've narrowed their genetic base so that they're no longer able to cope with extreme environmental change. Here at the museum, we study the wild relatives of many of these crop plants, which have been very useful in plant breeding in the past, but we also do new field work to target new populations of these relatives. For example, recently we've been to Peru collecting wild relatives of solanum species, relatives of tomatoes and potatoes. And we're not only looking at the plants growing in very extreme environments, but also looking at the insect communities that occur on them. This fieldwork will allow us to identify new populations and perhaps new genes in populations, genes for pest resistance or genes for resistance to cold, heat or drought, that will enable plant breeders of the future to use these wild relatives for breeding new varieties of food crops that will be able to resist environmental change. Digitizing such a diverse collection of this scale is an enormous challenge. We need your help to make it possible.